Hello favorite people in the world, 2015 is almost over and that means it is time for the annual LGBTQ Year in Review. Woohoo! The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act, which legalized marriage equality all over the United States. It was incredible. Same-sex couples started marrying all over the country, except for one county in Kentucky because Kim Davis wouldn't let them, but then she went to jail, so it was all okay. Caitlyn Jenner came out publicly as transgender in a process that involved a two-hour TV special, a magazine cover, a TV series, and so much more. She has sort of announced herself as a leader of the trans community, but based on her recent comments, we know that she actually still has a lot to learn about what that means. This was a depressingly record-setting year when it comes to violence against trans people, particularly trans women of color. There were at least 22 reported murders of trans people this year, as well as a number of trans youth suicides, which is a sobering reminder of how much more work we have to do to protect our trans community. There actually was a congressional forum held on how to address violence against trans people, which means that even though it's taking a long time, there are some people at the top listening. Discriminatory religious freedom bills are still a thing, particularly this year in Indiana, where a Religious Freedom Restoration Act almost became law but was stopped at the last minute. This was a big year for the rights of transgender students in schools, particularly when it comes to the issue of gender-affirming bathrooms and locker rooms. The Obama administration went as far as to file a supportive brief for a trans student who sued his school over unfair bathroom laws, whereas states like Illinois, Kentucky, and California use bathrooms as a starting point to try to take away trans students' rights to safety and comfort. Two more states banned conversion therapy for minors, Illinois and Oregon, as well as the city of Cincinnati. Members of Congress introduced the Equality Act, an all-encompassing bill that would basically outlaw anti-LGBT discrimination across the board. It's a long shot that it will actually pass, but at the bare minimum, it shows that there are some people at the top who are aware of the many ways in which LGBT people are still not equal today, even now that we have marriage equality. This was the year of the gender-neutral pronoun. Big-name publications like the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Oxford English Dictionary started to become more open to words like the singular they and the pronoun mix or mux spelled mx period. This sets a precedent for other publications and institutions in the country to figure out how they're going to navigate gender neutral language in the future, which is really exciting. Ireland legalized marriage equality by a vote, which is the first time that has ever happened, and by the way, it won by a landslide. The military announced that it's planning to end the ban on transgender service members. It's still in the works, but expected to roll out completely by next year. The movie Stonewall came out and faced a lot of criticism because it seems like the movie is really whitewashed and downplays the role of trans women of color in the actual Stonewall riots. Fun Home cleaned up at the Tonys with five awards, including the coveted title of Best Musical, which is a really big deal for a play that is based on a lesbian's memoir all about being a lesbian. We collectively fell in love with Adian Dowling, the trans athlete who was a runner-up in Men's Health's Ultimate Guy competition and who is generally so dreamy. Jazz Jennings had an amazing year. She became the face of a national marketing campaign, she got a TV series. Unfortunately, some elementary schools are not allowing students to read her book, which is a bummer because that's exactly what it was created for. Um, but there are more and more people being vocal about why we need to start teaching about gender and trans issues at a younger age, so hopefully that is going to not be a problem anymore soon. The Boy Scouts of America ended its ban on openly gay adult leaders in the organization, which is amazing considering how firmly they had been holding on to that position in the last couple of years. There was a big study that found that one third of young people in the United States do not identify as completely heterosexual, and about half of young people in the UK identify that way. That's one small step for taking down the institution of heterosexism and one giant leap for sexual fluidity. A chapter of the Girl Scouts rejected a $100,000 donation after the donor specified that it should not be used to support trans girls, but then they made back that money in a fundraiser in less than a day. That pretty much sums up 2015 in queer news. If I forgot your most impactful moment, then please leave it in the comments. I love you all so much. Thank you for sticking by me for another year. Uh, have a happy, wonderful new year, and I will see you in 2016. Mwah. Bye. The day after I finished making this video, the FDA announced that they were finally changing their policy that used to ban men who have sex with men from donating blood for their entire lives. Under the new policy, there will be a one-year deferral period where these men can donate blood after a year of abstinence. Of course, I am too lazy to re-record the entire video, but I still thought it was important to say something because while the new policy is better than the old policy, it's still discriminatory because it still puts unfair treatment on one particular group of people based on outdated information about HIV and AIDS that we should be way past by now. Also, I've never done something like this before, so hello, new shot. This is... this is fun. 
I'm at home and I didn't bring my tripod, so this is what I used to balance my camera today.